Welcome to Electron Online, and in this example, we're going to solve a first order differential equation using the technique of separation of variables, but now we also have what we call an initial value condition. With other words, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And with that, we're going to be able to solve for the what we call the constant of integration, c, that will come up uh, when we solve this equation. Well, first of all, let's rewrite this as y prime can be written as dy dx, so that means that we have x squared plus 1 times dy dx plus y squared plus 1 is equal to 0. Now, of course, we want to separate the variables. We want to put y's on one side, x is on the other side. The way to do that is to bring this to the other side. That means we have x squared plus 1 times dy dx is equal to minus y squared plus 1. And now we can put the, let's see here, the dy, no, we can move the, move the dx up here, the x squared plus 1 down here, and the y squared plus 1 down in this direction. So this can now be written as dy divided by y squared plus 1, we'll leave the negative sign on the right side of the equation, equals the minus of dx divided by x squared plus 1. And now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. And from the previous example that we did, when we did example number three, we can see here that's very typical. The integral of that can be written as the arctangent of y. So the arctangent of y is equal to the negative arctangent of x plus a constant of integration. Now we're going to move this over to the left side of the equation so we can write the arctangent of y plus the arctangent of x is equal to c. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and take the tangent of both sides. So we're going to take the tangent of the left side and the tangent on the right side. So let me move that over a little bit here. So we'll take the left side, we take the tangent of that, and we take the tangent of that. So now you say, well, how do I take the tangent of this quantity right here. Now you have to remember that this really represents an angle and that represents an angle. So in other words, we can say that if we take the tangent of an angle of A plus B, that can be written as the tangent of A plus the tangent of B divided by 1 minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. All right, so if you let this be A and this be B, so then you get, on top, you get Y plus X divided by 1 minus Y times X, or X times Y. I guess it's more proper to write this as X times Y. Let me go ahead and change that. Here we go. So we have X times Y is equal to the tangent of C. All right. So that's the solution. Now we can solve this for y. However, we have some initial conditions. We know that y will be equal to 1 when x is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and plug those values in. So I'm going to plug in 0 for x and 1 for y so I can solve for c right here. So that means when y is equal to 1 plus x, which is equal to 0, divided by 1 minus x would be equal to 0 and y would be equal to 1 and that equals the tangent of c. So simplifying that, we get 1 over 1 equals the tangent of c, or the tangent of c is equal to 1. Of course, what angle do I have so that when I take the tangent of that, I get 1, that would be 45 degrees, or pi over 2. So I can say, therefore, that c is equal to pi over 2, because the tangent of pi over 2, which is 45 degrees, oh, no, it's not pi over 2, it's pi over 4. Pi over 4 is 45 degrees, so when I take the tangent of 45 degrees, I get 1, so therefore c equals pi over 4. So I'm going to go back to this equation right here. So therefore, I can say that y plus x, y plus x, divided by 1 minus x times y, is equal to the tangent of c, and the tangent of c is equal to 1, so therefore I can say this is equal to 1, and there's the solution to my differential equation under the initial conditions that when x equals 0, y equals 1, and I get this as a result. And that's how we do that.